Welcome to another edition of Bourgeois. It might sound French, but we're 100% Pacific Northwest. We talk wine, beer, and all things wet in Washington. Here's your hosts. Thank you for joining us and welcome to Bourgeois, a lighthearted and behind-the-scenes look at the craft beverage industry in and around Washington State with your host Grant Monrian, Amber Peters, and me, Eric Degerman of GreatNorthwestWine.com. This week, our team caught up with Jason Merriman of Upstart Recusant Cellars in the historic White Bluffs American Viticultural Area north of Pasco and near the Columbia River. Jason used his master's degree in chemistry from Washington State University during his time working in the cellars at renowned wineries such as Chateau St. Michel, Woodward Canyon, and Canoe Ridge Vineyard. Jason and his family work in their orchards and estate vineyards and specialize in Italian-inspired wines and Bordeaux varieties. Recusant Cellars has worked hard to make their wines available to be shipped to more than 30 states. And along the way, they've been featured in WSU's Wine by Cougars program. They opened up their tasting room in time for the 2021 harvest. So sit back and learn more about the story at Recusant Cellars. We're in uh, North Pasco at Recusant Vineyard and Winery with Jason Merriman, who is the proprietor of this place. Jason, welcome to uh, Bourgeois. Thank you very much. This is this has been a long time coming, and uh, this is going to be fun. Good. I think it will be. So, uh, hey, first of all, um, what's in a name, right, Amber? I mean, Recusant? Yeah. And so, yeah. yes. <laughs> Sorry. I was going to make some Shakespeare line, but uh, never mind. No, that was that, a mistake. That, that's too high class here. We're out in farm country. As, as we often say, that we're farmers who make booze. So, um, like <laughs> But we've, we came across this name um, being a history buff. It was something that I really enjoyed reading the story. So um, the English who refused to follow Henry VIII into the Anglican church were known as the Recusant. And they were persecuted... So the priest holes and the, um, the nobles who lost their fortune, fortunes and a fair number of them actually came to the United States. I thought it was a really cool story about men who were willing to basically give up everything for what they believed. And, um, cool. Well, yeah, well, when you own a winery, you almost have to give up everything, right? Um, yeah, you do. I mean, <laughs> I, I, do they say? I quit a paying job. Yeah. When you make a little bit of money, you start with a lot. No, I'm just kidding. So with that, I mean... Why, what, what got you into this? I mean, Amber has the question, well, yeah, I mean, what, what brought you into this business? Yeah, I see city boy becomes farmer, how'd that happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that is, is kind of a crazy journey. It, you know, I'm originally from Southern California. My family moved up here uh, when I was a teenager and we came up here, kind of fell in love with it, wound up going to college, falling in love with a local gal and staying here. Um, I was always intrigued by the farming aspect of things, but growing up in LA and San Francisco, then coming out up here, it was kind of like, oh, this is the middle of nowhere. That's what I was wondering if you were from like the valley, you know, no. the, the farming area or not. I wound up in college, wound up working for a cherry farmer and working on a cherry farm and kind of falling in love with farming in general and not knowing how to get into the business. Um, but I was always intrigued by it. And then uh, after I graduate from college, I needed a job because I got married and Chateau Saint-Michel was hiring. And so I applied um, and I wound up getting a uh, lab tech job. And I worked with some amazing people. I didn't know it at the time. It was 1998 and uh, I was working with uh, Charlie Hoppus, who was the red wine maker at the time. And then Mike Janik was the overall winemaker for Chateau Saint-Michel. Two um, Washington State icons. Icon. So this gave you, I mean, this it, kind of gave you the itch, right? Because you're still in college, right? I, 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 yes. And it was something that uh, I worked there. I worked a harvest, one harvest, and it was amazing. The talented people, it was 1998. The wine industry was just starting to the just... The glory days. Yeah. It, it was the golden age. I mean, it was something that I didn't realize how awesome it was until I was telling somebody and realizing holy buckets, this is just crazy. Mm -hmm. I work with all these people. Um, and so then Charlie really liked me, and he wound up getting me another job at another winery over in Walla Walla. It was uh, Woodward Canyon, and um, I have to say that was an amazing experience. Um, I, I really liked Rick, uh, who started that, and then worked with some 
amazing people and um, really kind of learned about wine. Um, it's something that at St. Michelle, I have nothing but respect for their winemaking skills, but they are massive and they have relatively deep pockets. So anything that they want to get done, they usually get done. Uh, Woodward Canyon was a little bit smaller operation, but still really solid. Mm -hmm. So it kind of showed me that you could make really good wines um, and being small scale. Then from there, I went to Canoe Ridge Vineyard also over in um, Walla Walla. And that was a different experience. It was a little bit more of a corporate winery, mm -hmm. but it was still phenomenal. I, I wound up meeting some amazing people. And during this... You know, I, I was, in 1998, there was an interesting problem, uh, stuck fermentations, where you'd have this fermentation going along, and then it just kind of died prematurely. Hmm. It was something that, it was a great, it was a huge problem. And so I wound up talking and striking up a friendship with a professor out of WSU, and he convinces me that I need to go back to school and get an advanced degree. So at some point, it's like, yeah, okay, I'll do this. Because I was thinking, you know, I'm never going to rise out of lab techdom. I'm going to always be a lab flunky. I need to, you know, get more education. You know, move up the get corporate ladder. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Brr, brr. Yeah. Anyways. To that big prize at the top. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real. Right. <laughs> it's a mirage. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, anyways, so I wind up going back to school and getting a master's in chemistry. Uh, but along the way, I kind of uh, get lost in the world of of physics and chemistry and quantum mechanics and it's something that um, particularly electrochemistry became kind of this big thing that I was chasing after and um, I wound up constantly having a little bit of a, a kind of a touch back to the wine industry because even when I was going through my master's uh, my research professor found out that I had a lot of wine experience and they were just starting to start their uh, enology program then from there I wind up teaching some classes because I kind of didn't know where to go. And then from there, I wound up working out at uh, Pacific Northwest National Laboratory as a scientist, um, where I was in a uh, chemistry unit, and I got to work out at the area on some really cool projects. Uh, one of the projects that I worked on that I was really excited about was this thing called Myrana. It was a uh, nuclear physics project creating a detector for looking at a subatomic particle neutrinos. Hmm. I know, yeah, this, is, this is super geeky, but <laughs> <laughs> the, the reason why I bring it up is because uh, we had to go out uh, to South Dakota to um, the old uh, Homestead Gold Mine. It's now Sanford Underground Laboratory, and we had to uh, build a lab underground. Mm -hmm. So wow. I, I got to go a mile underground, build this clean room to wow. make this detector It's like parts. Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, it was so cool. <laughs> but a we, little we'd, different. But. We'd spend all day in the mine, and then we'd come out, and it would be like, what are we going to do? drink. <laughs> yeah, because where are you at again? Uh, South Dakota, Dakota <laughs> in the Black Hills. Lots to do. <laughs> so we, so uh, the, my project manager and I, Eric, um, we spend a lot of time drinking wine, talking about wine, and of course we find this one place in Rapid City, um, uh, what was it, uh, Botticelli's, and they had a half-price wine night, and we made sure we were there so we timed our trips so that we could hit half price wine <laughs> in the <Rapid> city <laughs> and drink wine. And of course, now we were drinking like eighty dollars bottles of wine, but it's only like forty bucks split between two guys. It's ah, not bad. It's, so we were tasting some amazing wines. We would be sitting there talking about wine, talking about wine. So this is where you hatch your. At, at this, it's kind of like, what am I doing with my life? I was in the wine industry. <laughs> I know the wine industry. Why am I spending all of my time talking about it, tasting these wines? Why am I not actually doing this? Mm -hmm. Then fast forward a little bit of time, and I get this email at work, and it's bring your daughter to, to uh, work day. And it was something that um, I worked in a radiation area, and it was something like, no way am I going to get an 11-year-old girl into a radiation area to show her what daddy does. <laughs> um, <Why not? clears throat> I don't know. Some, I think the government has yeah, some so. sort of weird bugaboo. <laughs> it's, About irradiating it's, children. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who knows? Right. Anyways, um, so at that, it got me thinking, and I was thinking, you know, it would be really kind of 
neat to have a business where I can work with my kids, teach them something that I am passionate about, and kind of, you know, give them the opportunity to do something that is, I think, really cool. Mm -hmm. So after, after, that's after a little bit, I decided, chuck it. I, I'm, I'm going to do this. And so luckily my wife was supporting and said, okay, dear. <laughs> Not to mention he has an entire group of harvesters within his family. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Yes. I, I have seven kids. So it's, wow. yes, yeah. yes. So that old school farm family. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to get the workers somewhere. That's true. It's true. That's true. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we decided, so I, I quit my job and I decided to plant the vineyard and then we started the winery a few years later, and here we are. So it, it's something that's been an, an enormously fun ride. There's been some crazy kind of uh, side routes. Um, oh, speaking of a side route, what do we have sitting in front of us? I mean, we oh, uh, we, we have this wine that's taunting us. That's just yeah. I know I can smell it. I've just been smelling know. it this whole time. <laughs> it smells good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> no, we're, this is story hour. We yeah. we, we don't it drink. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We can drink and tell stories, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. I tell my best stories that way. Right? Exactly. Right. This is a 2016 Petit Verdot. So th this was kind of the wine that if I was going to start my own winery, I wanted to start with. And um, I, I really enjoy the Petit Verdot. It has everything that I really love about a, 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 a Cabernet Sauvignon, except slightly more intense. The, the, the bouquet is a little bit more aromatic, a little bit more perfumey, I like to think of. And it is just an amazing wine. And 16 was year one, is that right? Year one for the, uh, no, it was uh, the second year for the vineyard. Second year for the vineyard. And, yeah. and, and Amber and I were talking a little bit earlier. I mean, it's. Yeah. Yeah, I just was curious how long it takes to get fruit off of your vines yeah, when you plant them. Yeah, you know? really. Or whatever. So yeah. usually somewhere between three to five years, okay. depending on soil and conditions. Mm -hmm. Because we planted the vineyard in an old alfalfa field, there was just an incredible amount of nutrients. And so the question was, what do we do with the grapes here? And it's like, well, let, let's harvest them and make wine. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, you yeah, know, right that's kind of what we were supposed to do anyways. So. Yeah. <laughs> So, so your vineyard out here, how many acres of uh, Petit do you guys have? We have 10 acres of Petit Verdot. I mean, I, I kind of went a little crazy. Um, this is one of those things where most places, if they're, you know, only like 20 acres, will plant like half an acre or maybe like, you know, a couple of rows. Um, I kind of went a little nuts. You're a gambler. <laughs> yeah. You know. All in. You, you got to roll the hard <laughs> six or you're just. I like it. <laughs> so. Yeah, so we, we planted 10 acres of Petit Verdot, 10 acres of Cabernet Sauvignon, and it's something that um, I, I love cabs, and um, it's something that now, I think phase two of the vineyard, we're going to be trying to plant a little bit of Merlot, a little bit of Cab Franc for blending components, um, but it's something that I, I really wanted the Petit Verdot. Yeah, and so. explain the complexity in this. I mean, it smells, I mean, it's, it's real hearty. I mean, Hardy? Yeah. Is it like a beef stew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the a, lot Sorry, of, a lot of iron in this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> really, no, I mean, no. It's better than that. It's good very, very good. <laughs> I, mean, I just don't have words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm learning. Not from Grant, though. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Probably from, from Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so I like to think of this having kind of dark notes of, you know, kind of a dark cherries mm -hmm. and kind of a very, you know, jammy with, you know, I, I, I love the mouthfeel in this. It's very velvety. It's smooth. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's kind of like a good whiskey in that regard. Um, and it has just enough oak to add the, the vanilla kind of flicks and, and characteristics, kind of that undertone. It's just an amazing wine. And it, it just goes down so easily mm -hmm. it lingers just enough but not so much that you're sitting there going yeah that's pretty acidic uh and is it, it has is it american oak or is it french no it's oak french oak so i i am there is the as a proud american i have to say yeah american oak is not necessarily the best though i i do have to say this is that the american coopers are starting to come out with some interesting product lines and we're kind of reviewing that process but i kind of grew up old school in that it's 100 percent french oak I mean, come on, because um, <laughs> previously the, the the American oak kind of left some green tannins, and so it was a little bit 
off-putting unless the wine was just right. And if you're going for something like a big cab or something like that, you needed more of the vanilla and any sort of green notes really kind of, you know, stood out. Um, what but do you, what do you what do you uh, taste what are you tasting in that? The cherry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same with beans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, and the, old, the old farm girl, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> alfalfa and wheat and pinto beans. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. So. nice. <laughs> Not high class. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no shame in that. <laughs> no, I actually, I've come full circle where I'm proud of it now. Yes, but, yes. Uh, mm. But the cherry, you taste I do it. taste the cherry. Yeah, and the vanilla. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It's no, nice. it is. It's beautiful. You're sitting there going, mm, you know what would be better mm-hmm. is to make this into like a uh, get some vanilla ice cream and make a. Uh, like a root beer float. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Wrap it a wine right. float. Sign me up. That, yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, I think we need to try that, actually. I, I love big cabs, and I love kind of the big, bold wines. But the thing that I personally don't like is the fact that you have these wines that have to sit for years and years and years. And it's something that it's like, you know, I'm reading the marketing data and even considering my own preference, it's like, if I get a bottle of wine, unless it's going in the cellar, uh, I'm going to be drinking it relatively soon. Mm -hmm. So how do I make the biggest wine possible that is eminently drinkable? Um, So the idea is these softer, fruit-forward wines, but they have enough body, enough tannins, enough structure to kind of carry them on for years. So you're sitting there going, wow, this, this is really good. And then maybe you you might have accidentally put a bottle away because you forgot about it or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you bust it out a year later and you're just going, oh, wow, this is really good. Mm-hmm. So I wanted something that was fruit forward and um, just a phenomenal, phenomenally intense but soft around the edges so you're not bludgeoned with, you know, some sort of tannic bomb. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, it's, um, my hand hasn't come off and it's almost like my blankie. <laughs> Right? I mean, it's so good. He's talking about soft. I mean, it's almost like my blankie. I, I can put it down. No, every time. So one of the things I like to do is whenever anybody comes in for a tasting and I'm around, I will taste it with them. Partly to see how the wine is aging, but mm. partly because uh, I like the wines too. <laughs> that is a weakness. <laughs> so what, what else So what else does Requisant yeah, we, we, we so we have the Petit Verdot, which is kind of like my my baby. Uh, then we have a Cabernet Sauvignon, but it's a softer, fruit fruit forward style, um, and it's something that I love the idea of having a intense but eminently drinkable kind of um, Cabernet Sauvignon. And then we have a Dolcetto. Now the Dolcetto. So the the guy that I worked with, um, my project manager at uh, Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, was uh, Eric Hoppy. He he planted a vineyard. He bought some ground over in Benton City, and he planted up a vineyard of his own. And he has Dolcetto. At which, when I heard that he was going to get some Dolcetto, I was like, oh, this this is a lighter bodied Italian red. Well, we'll keep talking about it. But we should probably open it. What? Yeah. You, you want me to open Try some it. wine? Yeah. We're at a winery, pal. We don't drink wine here. Sorry. I just want to, I want to know what I'm, I want to know We know what, what Grant came about. for. <laughs> <laughs> There's no shame in it. Yeah. Just embrace it. I'm embracing it. <laughs> but so, problem. So yes, I, I, I bought, I, I get some, my grapes from him. Part of it is an excuse to go over, uh, over there and hang out with him and, you know, talk about wine and that kind of stuff. Um, and then part of it is just because I, I really enjoy the Dolcetto grape. Um, also, too, in the coming years, um, Eric planted some Grenache. And so I have some Grenache for 2022. And so hopefully in another couple of months, I'll be bottling the Grenache up. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so uh, my wording is probably going to be off. But this is a little bit more of a sharp, like, uh, smell it, it's lighter it's it's something that is decidedly different it, it is not as big and bold it is something that's a lot more kind of like mm. your your back patio on a summer evening kind of you know wine where it has some more of this hints of strawberry mm. and it's something that is it's lighter body but it's it's fun and it's something that is decidedly different than my other wines yeah. i tasted the strawberry this would be really good with like chocolate oh oh <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, one of the, there's there's this um, one fantastic person. Um, uh, the owner of Bomb's House of okay. Chocolates uh-huh. over on Edison. Another local company. Another local company. She, uh, Mindy is just a lovely person. And um, she was starting to carry my wines, and she was um, wanting to do some events. So we had to, absolutely had to, go over, taste chocolates, and taste wines they for the chocolate. They had to twist your arm. Yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. It was horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry. All I could say was the best business meeting ever, where you're imagine. forced to drink wine and eat chocolates. You're like, this is my life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How did I sign up for this? <laughs> and she does an amazing, uh, um, just a fantastic job on chocolates. And so that was a pleasure. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think the meeting lasted like an hour and a half, two hours. And by the end of it, it had kind of gone off the rails. <laughs> but it was fantastic. And... Um, I think I have the notes somewhere from there, and, and the notes in the first half of the meeting were r- pretty spot on, but after a while, they kind of get That's a little hilarious. wonky. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> so can like, see in the moment <laughs> yes. where the sugar and the alcohol started taking home. Oh, so that was, the, that was the funny thing is, you know, I'd been to wine tastings, I'd done stuff before, and had consumed that kind of quantity of alcohol, mm-hmm. and it, it wasn't that bad. Mm-hmm. But it was the sugar and the mm-hmm. alcohol that after a while is like, Okay, Mm -hmm. this is the best ever. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta package that up. Yes. So I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Amber has a good nose. She has a good nose. She creates candles, right? So, I mean, so. A wine flavored (laughs) candle. I see no problem with this. Right, right. Yeah, they have uh, fragrance oils that are, you know, Cabernet. (laughs) I'm thinking just use the wine. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, why? Why mimic it, right? <laughs> but it it has been interesting to figure out how different everybody's. I'm sure people's palates are the same way, but like just their olfactory oh, <laughs> senses are completely different. Things is. some people love, other people hate. Well, and so exactly, mm-hmm. and it's something that when I first started, I was planning on being predominantly petite Bordeaux kind mm-hmm. of house, but then I added the cab because it was a rec- what I ran into is people don't really know petite Bordeaux very well, but they know cab, mm-hmm. and then you go from there. But then you bring in like the Dolcetto, and now all of a sudden. Now you you have a much bigger kind of portfolio. You you can start to appeal to people, and some people go, oh wow, the the petite's really good, but and then they'll taste the dolcetto and they go, wow, this is my this is my jam. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but then you'll have other people that are like, no no no, the petite verdot or no no the cab. I have a couple of blends that are going to be coming out in the next month or so, um, and then like the Grenache, and it's something that each wine brings something different and appeals to somebody mm-hmm. different. I mean, some people really like certain t- flavors, certain smells, mm-hmm. and it has been educational. And um, even, even for me, you know, to some degree, I've kind of, um, there for a while, I kind of lost the enjoyment of tasting wine because it became technical. All right. I was looking for were flaws. You know, right. you're sitting there going, and <laughs> that's Oh, the acid's too high. No, there's too much volatility. You're like, I can't stand myself anymore. Yes. You're going, what a pretentious asshat. Anyways. <laughs> um, so it, it... Duly noted. <laughs> it was something that I basically, I don't want to say learned to, but basically rediscovered um, some of the joy of wine. After talking and sharing wine with other people, then you kind of see the enjoyment in their eyes, and it's like, okay, this made it worth it. And you can kind of see how they... Um, really take to it and what they bring and mm-hmm. what they discover in it. And you're sitting there going, yeah, I did that. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. awesome. You, you know, I, th- I, th- I was talking with a, with, uh, a winemaker somewhere, and, and he was saying to me, <laughs> Other than me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but of course. It's like, not okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you're cheating. <laughs> yeah, sorry, dude. Um, and, and, but but it, it was kind of interesting. It's kind of like you said, everybody has all these different palates. But yes. what he told me, he said, he, I said, so what's a good wine? He goes, what do you like? Exactly. Right? So it's, exactly. It depends on what you like. Right. It, and that's the thing that I think, it, it, it's kind of my, I don't want to say my passion, but kind of the thing that I really want people to discover about wine. And that is, whatever wine you like is a good wine. Even if it's a box wine or it comes in a gallon jug, it doesn't <laughs> matter. The, I mean, the thing that I was... Re- 
you know, kind of that, that kind of goes back to the tagline of us being farmers who make booze. I mean, it's something that it's like, this is booze. Mm-hmm. Why are we being pretentious about this? Right. Th- you know, why are we trying to say, oh, I have a $1,000 bottle of wine? It's kind of like if you paid a $1,000 for a bottle of wine, either that better knock your socks off or you're just bragging. Why don't you just buy the Ferrari and call it good, you know? Right. So, or you're projecting something onto that wine. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's something that, uh, that, and that also goes back to kind of my admiration for Chateau Saint Michel. It's like they, uh, if, if I was going, if I was in someplace else and I wanted a solid, really good bottle of Washington wine, I'd, I'd buy a bottle of Ch- uh, Saint Michel wine. And it doesn't matter what they make, they, they do a good job. Um, if I wanted to taste something a little bit more kind of unique, a little bit more kind of, um, you know, artistic, something that's a little bit, you know, even more intense, I might go with other Washington wineries. But if I'm in some place like Rapid City, South Dakota, and I can't get anything, and all I'm seeing is St. Michelle there, I'm grabbing the bottle of St. Michelle. Mm-hmm. Also, too, I'm not grabbing anything other than Washington wine. So, you know. Uh, There's that. that. <laughs> <laughs> a, a little bit of a bias. I might have been born in California, but I, I have no, I don't represent them. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm opening the Cabernet Sauvignon. So, you know. Uh-oh. Just can This could be a long podcast. This is going to be an awesome podcast. We might have to go for a walk after this before. <laughs> Intermission. <laughs> so um, in the future, going forward with uh, millennials yes. coming up and, you know, eventually yes. uh, Gen, what do they call them? Z? Zers? Yeah. Yeah, Zoomers um, or Zers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, do. yeah. Do you guys have any um, ways that you're pivoting or characteristics about certain generations that you're noticing? Yes, yes. That is a phenomenal question. And mm. it's also one of those things that um, it has a lot of interesting and exciting possibilities. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one of the things that I've noticed is um, the old way of marketing wine was kind of based on the status. Um, particularly baby boomers, were really driven more by status. Oh, I have a blah, 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 blah wine Mm -hmm. that is hard to come by, and it cost me an arm and a leg, and I'm awesome. Blah, 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 blah. (laughs) Yeah. They're they're a good winery, I have to say. I don't don't mean to disparage them, but the blah, blah, blah winery is particularly good. So, just saying. I know the guys there. They're good. Uh, Don't want to alienate anyone. No, no, no. We are a big fan. No, that is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, but it, millennials are really kind of driving the next next phase because they're a bigger generation. Mm-hmm. And because of that, they're really, it seems like experientially driven. They're not as much about status. Mm-hmm. They're not as much about um, brand loyalty. They're more about experience. Mm-hmm. If they have a fun experience, if there's something that connects them to whatever that product is, um, they're really going to be far more apt to buy it. And it's something that I'm seeing that even with the winery, the millennials that I take the time to kind of introduce them to wine or have them kind of experience the wine, mm-hmm. one, they're, they're far more grateful. And, and it's something that I think that, that that is one thing that the wine industry needs to be more sensitive to is being, you know, Having people re- rediscover the joy of wine, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's not as pretentious as you think it is. Um, and it's something that with that, the millennials, once they have that good experience, they're usually connected to you. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I find that fantastic. I think that that's, there's, there's a huge opportunity. Um, so, yeah, and then even with the, the, the Generation Z, which my kids are a part of, it's something that that's kind of a similar kind of thing. They're looking for that kind of experience. But it's not just experience. It's more like a connection. Mm-hmm. They're looking for a connection that draws them to um, that particular product, mm-hmm. whether it's jeans or whether it's 
a bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. so, so, so what do you think? It's good. It's good. It's a little bit drier. Is yes. that right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. but I like. Yes. I this like is, that. This is the Cabernet. This mm -hmm. is 2018 Cabernet Sauvignon, mm -hmm. and it's something that we. It's still softer, a little bit fruitier, but it still has those uh, the, the concentrated tannins mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. the Cab. It's a little drier mm -hmm. than the the Dolcetto. Yeah. It has like a like more it. of a it's alcoholic like. Mm -hmm. Like an alcohol content, like you can you can taste the alcohol in it. Yeah. So what is that part? I can feel it in my head, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that too. It just uh, tastes uh, good. Yeah, I know it does taste. <laughs> no, so the alcohol content on this I think is a little bit higher than the Dolcetto, and it's something that um, in this it you you can kind of the flavors are such that the alcohol is kind of played up in. It's it's not as hidden by some of the other you know flavors. That's good. So yeah, this is really an interesting experience. <laughs> Talking about I, it, I, I hope it's good. <laughs> it is good. It is good. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. It it is. It, no, it's really it's um it's just interesting to me how different it is to drink something without knowing about it yes. and without having a social interaction while I do it Yes. versus being able to talk to you guys and yeah. learn about it. And you know, it's just, it's, it's um, a lot more, in, it's a lot more enjoyable. Well, and, it, and that's deeper. the thing that I've found is that wine is one of the many things that just needs to be shared with people. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's always good to, to, well, I shouldn't say that. It it's nice to drink, but it alone. But it's something that it's better if you have somebody to share it with mm -hmm. and to talk about it. And mm -hmm. the best times that I have had were usually drinking a bottle of wine and sharing stories. Mm -hmm. And it's it's something that I, I've kind of made it a little bit of my personal mission is to try to educate more people. And mm -hmm. if it's something that they're a first time wine drinker and mm -hmm. they've never had any sort of wine before. I would love to have them come out here and taste some wine because mm -hmm. even if they don't like it, they ultimately say, nope, not going to do it. I'd, I'm going to stick to my tequila. And it's kind of like, that's okay. At least you tried it. Mm -hmm. There's such a diversity of flavors mm -hmm. and styles that from, in essence, the same thing, you can have wildly different products. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's both a fantastic art and it's also a fantastic experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super so. ancient. Yes. Which I think it's really cool. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh. So. Awesome. All right. I think we're probably going to probably, so, so we'll. Um, you want to end this? Really? <laughs> no, on that note? To. Come on, Grant. <laughs> I mean, it's true. So, yeah, I know. No, we can keep going. Go out strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember, Let's get to know each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's this one up. time. <laughs> yeah. Just I shouldn't be saying this right now, but. <laughs> Band camp? No. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. So We um, could get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this so, is PG-13. This is a family show. It Come is. on. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So what's, what's on the horizon with you guys? You said you have some, some new... New products coming out? Some new blends, and then we're also coming out with um, a Grenache, uh, kind of a, a dark red wine that has some real intensity, a nice French wine. Um, I, I'm on the hunt for a, a white wine or a rosé. Mm. It's something that I'm constantly asked about, do you have a dry white or do you have a rosé? And I have to always go, no, because I'm a loser. I don't have that. <laughs> um, but it's something that I'm on the lookout. And, and I don't really want to make a wine that I don't like. <laughs> it, <clears throat> being the owner, I have that prerogative. Um, and it's something that I um, am trying to look for a wine, a white wine or a rosé that I like and enjoy mm -hmm. and it's something that i would really like to make a pinot blanc but nobody really grows that around here too much and it's something that so it's like okay what else can i make i might wind up with a chardonnay just because if chardonnay is done well like in the montrachet style of white burgundy all that stuff can be amazing and it's something that i totally think the soils here in eastern washington can totally handle that and get it done it's just a matter of finding the right stuff. So I am on the hunt for a white wine. I will find it, and it will be amazing. The Holy Grail. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well said. But this actually exists. So. Yes, yeah. and, and it, it's something, too, that... So, like, we're in the White Bluffs AVA. That, mm -hmm. It was a new AVA um, that came about as of last January. Um, 
and it's something that I would love to get something here, mm -hmm. but if I can't get it here, the place that I think makes the best Chardonnay is the Wolouk Slope. I think Red Mountain gets more attention or sucks all the attention out of the room when there's other regions in the state that are equally as amazing. Mm -hmm. They just might be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I would love to have some Chardonnay from the Wolouk Slope because that would be, you can get it minerally with hints of apple and pear, and that would be fant fantastic rather than the big buttery oaky thing that was, you know, from the 80s and, you know, kind of played out. The 80s one. <laughs> I mean, it was awesome music, and the parachute pants are totally, but, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, the music was spectacular. <laughs> So um, what AVA are you guys under, and when did that start? And We are in the White Bluffs AVA. That is a newly designated AVA as of January of 2022. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's relatively new. Um, it is something that my vineyard is situated uh, between uh, Sagemore, uh, has two vineyards, one to the south, one to the north of us. One is their, the south, southern one is um, their old block, Cabernet, and then the two to the north are Bacchus and Dionysus vineyards. Um, a lot of wineries have Bacchus and Dionysus grapes. They do an, Sagemore does a, a great job. But it, it shows that this soil is particularly amazing. And I think part of it has to do with, uh, we, we can get kind of geeky in here and that uh, talk about the sediment um, and kind of the silts that are really in the soil that really kind of allow for great nutrient uptake into the grapes. Um, and it's something that it, my experience when I was in the Walla Walla area was that um, if they're going to have an old vines cab, it's from Sagemore's old block. It is an amazing, it, you know, it, it was one of those things that it was the most underrated, underknown kind of Cabernet in the state. And those vines are massive and they are incredible they were old back in like you know 2000 they were like 40 years old wow. uh so wow it is, is something that's old back then too <laughs> <laughs> it, <Never. laughs> it's something that um it, it's it's kind of the secret that nobody talks about that everybody knows red mountain nobody knows this area mm -hmm. and it's it's something that is both a crying shame and a great fantastic you know kind of discovery yes um it's interesting, Preston Cellars was kind of the first one here in Franklin County to kind of, or at least that I'm aware of, that mm -hmm. started a winery. Uh, now they've since gone. Um, there, aren't many winery, there aren't many wineries or uh, vineyards left here in Franklin County in the now newly designated White Bluffs AVA, which is a cr crying shame because as far as heat unit days and uh, several other com uh, uh, factors, we are very close to... Um, Red Mountain as far as all those kind of criteria. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we have some amazing grapes here. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it's something that it, we happen to have a farm here. It worked out well as far as where, we're, where we were located and the soil. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is just a huge potential for um, great quality wines. Mm -hmm. I know Sagemore just a mile to the south of us and a mile to the north have made some of the best wines in the state. Jason, just thank you for letting us come okay. here and ask you a bunch of questions and letting us drink your wine. Yes. Um, we've had a great time. and um, Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll probably come visit you again when you have some new products coming out probably in the, in the next part of the year. Yeah, that'd we'll be awesome. Yeah, that would be fantastic. No, that would, this has been a hoot. Uh, I've, I've had it. This has been an amazing thing. So, yes, please come back. Thank I, you so much. Yes.